This podcast is entitled Models of Health and Illness, and it's an attempt to take a look at how we understand what constitutes health and therefore what constitutes illness. Strange as it may seem, this is not immediately self-evident, um, as you'll see in just a moment. One way of understanding health is to look at it as functionality. And its opposite then, illness, would be understood as dysfunction. So this model would ask questions like, can you do what you want to do? If you can do what you want to do, then you have an adequate level of health for what it is that you want to do. If you want to run a marathon and you can't, then you need to increase your level of health in order to enable you to run a marathon. But if you're not interested in running marathons and you just want to get up and go to work and come home and do some things with your family, then your level of health may be adequate. Uh, on the other hand, if you'd like to do that but you can't because you've got chronic heart failure or because you're paralyzed from the waist down, then you have a problem. That's an illness issue and the level of health, the level of functionality that you're currently experiencing is not adequate. So one of the questions here will be, is your level of functionality increasing? Is it decreasing or is it staying the same? If it's increasing, you're getting healthier. If it's decreasing, you're getting unhealthier. If it's staying the same, that may be good unless you're not able to do what you want to do. Do you need somebody to do for you what you cannot do for yourself until you're able to do it again? Now, this is one understanding of healthcare, by the way, that healthcare practitioners assist a patient in doing those things for himself that he cannot do for himself under the current circumstances until he's able again to do those things for himself. So for some people this means that they can't breathe for themselves so somebody has to breathe for them or hook them up to a ventilator that will breathe for them. For some people they're not able to um, care for themselves or to empty their bowels or whatever it might be and they need help doing those things until once again they're able to do them for themselves. In this model, then, healing is seen as a returning to functionality. And as the person becomes healthier, they are more able to do those things that they want to do for themselves. Another model is a wholeness-brokenness model. Whole meaning healthy, functional. That this person is whole in every way, for example, socially whole in that they are related and connected to other people, emotionally whole in that they're happy, they are complete, they're strong, they're capable, they are whole in the sense in which they are able to do those things that they want to do and all the various pieces of their lives are connected and working together. The illness aspect of it then would be to see that part of the person is broken. So that if a person is broken, they are ill, they're hurt perhaps, perhaps they're weak, they may be alone, they may be unhappy, incomplete, unable, so that their brokenness may be not only physical, but emotional, intellectual, social, spiritual. Another way of uh, another kind of set of words that describes this would be integration, disintegration. A person who is whole is integrated. All the pieces of their lives are connected and fit together and work well together. But a person who is ill is experiencing disintegration to some degree or other. They may intend to do something, but their body won't let them do it because it isn't able for some reason. They're sick, they're hurt, they're broken. Um, it may be that they want to have a certain kind of social relationship, but they're not able to do it because they're broken, perhaps socially, perhaps emotionally, or mentally, or physically. So the wholeness-brokenness model is another way of talking about health and illness, and another way of understanding our role as health caregivers. Another model is the connected-disconnected model. <coughs> According to the Bible, all brokenness, all dysfunction, all illness, including sickness and death, comes from disconnection with God, who is the source of all life. The biblical picture is that human beings were created to be connected. And when they are disconnected, like a branch disconnected from a tree, then the life of the tree no longer is able to flow into the branch, and so the branch begins to wither and die. 
another analogy that we might use here that the Bible doesn't use is the analogy of a fetus connected to the maternal circulation by the placenta. And um, if the fetus is disconnected from the placenta, then the fetus obviously begins to die. Another model that the Bible, again, knows nothing about is the idea of disconnecting a lamp from electricity. The difference is there, of course, that when you disconnect a lamp from the electricity, it immediately dies, whereas in the other models, they begin to die, but it takes some time, which is a little more apt because, according to the biblical picture, when humanity chose to disconnect itself from God, it chose to disconnect itself from the source of life and strength and when it did that it immediately began to die. Human beings might live 70, 80, 90, 100 years but they are in a dying mode and they are becoming weaker and less able as they go on. Um, one way of um, thinking about all of this is to understand human beings as made for intimate connection with God and when they disconnect from God they begin to lose that which they once had maybe an analogy would be a laptop computer when it's plugged into the source of electricity it can function for a really long time virtually forever but when you pull the plug and you disconnect your laptop computer from the electrical outlet, the laptop computer in a sense begins to die. Now it may live for two hours or three hours or four hours, but sooner or later the battery is going to go dead and then you the screen goes blank and you lose whatever happens to be in memory. Many of us have had that unfortunate experience, but that's similar to the kind of thing that happens to humanity disconnected from God. They live for a while, but eventually they can no longer go on in their own power. A biblical model of life, which you saw in the uh, biblical worldview, the biblical map that I shared before, um, diagrams some of this, that creation was a time for wholeness. It was a time for connection. It was a time for functionality. The fall brought with it a certain amount of dysfunctionality as a result of disconnection, and the result was brokenness, no longer wholeness. We have lived all of human history down there in the place of brokenness, disconnection, disintegration, dysfunction, and uh, that's all we know. We've never seen a fully whole, fully healthy, fully unbroken, integrated, connected human being. None of us have ever seen that. But the biblical model says that God will one day recreate his original intention, and once again, human beings will be reconnected. They will become fully functional and whole once again. The biblical model, enhanced by the New Testament, also says that God, in the form of Jesus, came down into human history. He entered into our dysfunction. He became a part of our brokenness. He entered into our disintegration and our disconnection from divinity. And he made it possible for us to be reconnected to the source of all life. He made it possible for us to be restored to wholeness someday. He made it possible for us to gain back the functionality that we lost in the fall. Spirituality is what gives us awareness of this alternate reality to what most people call reality. See, for most people, reality is the fallen, disconnected, broken, dysfunctional world. But it is our spirituality that says that this can't be. There has to be something more. There has to be something better. We just aren't entirely content with the way things are. And so we long to understand why it went wrong and how it can be made right. And there's something inside of us that sort of smells eternity and senses that there's a better kind of life, a, a higher degree of functionality and wholeness. This spirituality not only gives us awareness of this alternate reality, but it also enables us to connect with God through Jesus Christ. And therefore it enables God to work in us and 
through us, through his spirit, who connects with us through our spirit. In other words, the spirit of God, we usually call this the Holy Spirit, connects with our spirit in order to reconnect us to God and to give us a measure of that functionality and wholeness back again, even in the here and now. So spiritual people are people who are sensitive to the working of the Holy Spirit in the world and in their lives and who are able to reach out and connect to that and find strength and health and life in it. This concludes the podcast. Uh, I hope you think about these things and um, discuss them with your classmates on the discussion board and also in your reflection paper.